Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 235. We're going to talk about the teleconference between Judge Preska and all of the participants in the battle royale over the documents in the defamation suit. We were talking earlier about how Preska was going to have this conference, this teleconference, and obviously she did, and it happened at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time today. And from the reports that we're getting, there were times where it turned pretty contentious and where she admonished Dershowitz's lawyer, which is fantastic to hear because if anyone ever needed to be put in their place, it's Dershowitz. Mr. I kept my underpants on, so it's all good, and any law team that's representing his ass. So I was really happy to see that in the report. We're going to jump right into the article tonight. And the article we have is from lawandcrime.com. The author of the article is Colin Kalmbacher. Headline, Judge repeatedly loses patience with Alan Dershowitz's lawyer during hearing on Jeffrey Epstein files. Now... We know that this has been contentious from the jump, and we know that Dershowitz, Mr. I kept my underpants on so everything's all good, is rattled because he's on a blitz all of a sudden. All of a sudden, he's tweeting like a madman about the case. He's tweeting like he's Donald Trump at 2 o'clock in the morning right now. For what reason? Who are you trying to impress right now, Mr. Dershowitz? Going on the full frontal attack, calling Virginia a liar and defaming her once again? Meanwhile, sir, at this point, the onus is most certainly on you to prove that you are not guilty of what she's talking about because, my friend, the evidence is clear at this point. A federal judge repeatedly lost her patience with an attorney representing Alan I Kept My Underpants on Dershowitz during a Tuesday hearing over two separate but related defamation cases concerning Jeffrey Epstein and his alleged global elite servicing sex trafficking operation. I, I don't... Can, alleged? We know that Jeffrey Epstein was running a sex trafficking op operation. What's, what's alleged about it? Now, obviously, a, a site like law and, uh, law, lawandcrime.com, they'll say alleged if it's, you know, talking about Dershowitz, but I don't think there's any doubt, right, in anyone's mind in the public sphere or in the court of law at this point, that Jeffrey Epstein was guilty. The man was convicted already once, and if there was any justice in this country, he would have been convict convicted of a lot worse than the sentence he got. So I don't know about this alleged nonsense. We're just going to go with, we'll drop that alleged part, and we'll call it a global elite servicing sex trafficking operation. That sounds better rolling off the tongue. The specific subject of the hearing was a recent Dershowitz motion to modify a, year, a years-old protective order in the settled defamation case between Epstein's survivor. Notice how they call her a survivor now, which is great. When we first started covering this case, they weren't, they, you know, it was always victim this, victim that. That ship has sailed. The second these girls lived through what they lived through and came out on the other side and decided to stand up to Jeffrey Epstein, his remaining associates, the scoundrel vermin in the legacy media, and the crooks who are protecting them all, well, they deserve to be called survivors. So I'm glad to see a lot of, uh, a lot of outlets have jumped on board and are calling them survivors. Virginia Roberts and Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's alleged groomer. While the actual controversy between Roberts and Maxwell ended in 2015, huh, that's incorrect. I, I think uh, Virginia would take some umbrage to that statement. Obviously, I don't speak for Virginia, but I, I highly doubt that anything has been settled in Virginia's mind when it comes to uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. While the actual controversy between Roberts and Maxwell ended in 2015, Roberts and her legal team have fought for years, occasionally alongside attorneys for the media, to unseal the documents in that case. And they should be doing that, right? All of this should be unsealed. It's going to further the criminal case against these people and, in the court's own words, further justice. So I don't understand how they could say that these documents do not meet those parameters. They do not only meet those parameters, they exceed those parameters, in my opinion. So, 
yeah, let's get it all out there. Let's get it all unsealed. Let's not have any of this BS redactedness either. Let's get it all unsealed and let's let the public get a good hard look at just what kind of disgusting animals our elected officials, our business leaders, etc., etc., are rubbing elbows with and breaking bread with. The process of sealing, unsealing, and eventually resealing those documents has been controlled by a protective order issued by the Southern District of New York in 2016. And again, if Berman was, you know, such a, uh, a hero in all of this, don't you think he would have implored for these to be unsealed as well? Don't you think he would have fought to get them unsealed to help the survivors out? He didn't say a word about it, and neither did the SDNY Prosecutorial Office. So forgive me if I'm not willing to hold them up as martyrs. A pitched legal battle has been fought in recent years to have those documents released to the public due to the highly sensitive allegations they likely contain. Well, we know for sure that the allegations that they contain are explosive. And we know that the people who are mentioned within these documents are now having plenty of restless nights for once. You see, the shoe is on the other foot. For all of these years, these people were resting comfortably. They went about their lives. They started their interior design companies. They became pilots. They moved on with their law firms. Meanwhile, the survivors were left struggling and scraping just to restart their lives, just to get things out of the starting gate again. And now, the shoe is on the other foot, and these predators, you well, they've become the prey. Those documents, known as just some of many secret Epstein files controlled by various courts, are widely believed to contain the names of many high-profile men in politics, finance, and the arts who are presumably involved in the alleged child sex trafficking scheme. Folks, I don't even, I, I, can't, I can't put into words really how explosive this stuff is going to be when it's released. And I'm telling you now, I'm calling it now, we'll see a full fevered, frontal assault of these people trying to keep their image built, a PR assault. They will spend loads of money to try and gaslight the public into thinking that they're not guilty, when in reality, all you have to do is follow the evidence that has been provided in these articles. And they're just scratching the surface here, right? They're just giving you an idea of what's going on. Once you start digging deeper for yourself, and once you get underneath the surface and into the actual depths of what is truly going on here, your mind will be completely blown. Roberts has long alleged that Dershowitz, who previously worked as, Epstein's as one of Epstein's lawyers, was one of the men who took part in Epstein's alleged network of young girls. She also alleges that Dershowitz, I kept my pants on so it was okay, had sex with her approximately six times. Dershowitz, I kept my pants on so it was okay, has consistently maintained his innocence and repeatedly called Roberts a liar. He said they've never met. That sounds familiar, huh? Didn't old Joe Exotic of the Windsor family try and use that same excuse on us? Didn't the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family also try and use his family as an alibi? Same shit that Dershowitz is doing. Oh, well, I was on the island. My wife was with me. Okay, and? What happened, when you're, what happened if your wife fell asleep? We don't know all of the details, so how could you even begin to try and use that as a plausible alibi? Aren't you this high-profile lawyer? Give me a break, mister. I kept my pants on, my underpants on, Dershowitz. You're just an absolutely disgusting, reprehensible human being, in my opinion. And it's embarrassing to see the way you conduct yourself and to see the way you talk about Virginia and all of these statements that you're making recently. What has you so shook there, pal? What has you so shook, sir, that you are coming out on the offensive like this? You have to know that you're going to be met with just as much furor and just as much force, right? And don't think your parasitic friends in the media are going to provide cover this time. We're pulling an end around on them. They are inconsequential as far as this story goes. In early 2019, Roberts sued Dershowitz over his false and defamatory denials of her sexual abuse claims. 
Dershowitz countersued for defamation in late 2019. In a recent motion, he asked for access to the full tranche of files from the original lawsuit against Maxwell, as well as additional discovery documents from both Roberts and others, because he says those files will help his defense. This is a classic bit of muddying the waters here. He's trying to shake things up, trying to get things confused, and to try to take some of the pressure off of him, some of the spotlight off of him, he wants some of these, and I quote, others to be outed as well. And it's a shrewd, uh, a shrewd plot there, Mr. I kept my underpants on. But in reality, not shrewd enough, not slick enough, and without your parasites in the legacy media providing gaslight material for the, the folks, Nobody is buying your nonsense. Again, we are doing an end around on the mainstream media, on the legacy media. This background, this background brings us to the Controversy Tuesday, and that's the backstory of what led up to today's teleconference call with Judge Preska. This is not an issue of public disclosure, Dershowitz attorney Howard Cooper told the court during Tuesday's hearing. Cooper said that his client simply wants to join the extant, the extant protective order. In other words, he wants to be able to access the documents from the Maxwell case. A. He wants to see what they have on him. B. He wants to see the deposition of uh, the deposition Maxwell might have given and what she has said about Dershowitz. And he also wants to muddy the waters, like I was saying try and get some of the spotlight off of him. Say that there's another uh, uh, infamous person in here like Ehud Barak or Glenn Dubin or Les Wexner, etc., etc. He would much prefer some of the spotlight going on them. Remember what I told you, folks? These people are in cover-your-ass mode now. It's all about self-preservation. If you think Dershowitz cares about any of these other people, you are sadly mistaken. He will gladly sacrifice any one of these people at the altar if it means he gets off somehow. Well, Mr. I kept my underpants on? You got a long road to hoe, my friend, because Virginia has brought the goods. You? Well, you've just brought us a pile of shit. This is proper, Cooper argued, because that protective order was not the final word. And because the Second Circuit Court of Appeals may have changed the whole issue of party reliance when issuing the ruling to release the files after Epstein's summer 2019 arrest. Now, Cooper is trying to gain the access to these files, boy, tooth and nail here. He's using every single possible excuse he could come up with to try and implore Judge Preska to bounce in his direction. Senior U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska was unimpressed. The judge interrupted Cooper to note that the original protective order was clear that it was for one case and one case only, the defamation controversy between Roberts and Maxwell. And even in that case, I don't think any of that stuff should have been protected in the first place. Again, what they're doing is trying to protect some of their bagmen. Some of the most powerful people in the world are named in that case. And those people, in turn, are provided, providing money to these politicians for their election campaigns and re-election campaigns. So, why would they want to out them? Why would they want to put mud on their face, a little egg on their face? Ah, seal it. Make sure you seal it. If you don't think that happens, folks, you are being very naive. It might as well be Tammany Hall in New York still and boss man tweed at the controls. The attorney went on to note that his client would continue to seek the release of those files because they believe Roberts is a bad actor by continuing to make claims against Dershowitz. In other words, she hasn't been intimidated or bullied or beat back, so she has to be a bad actor, right? Because there's no way that Virginia Roberts, one of the survivors, would ever stand up to the esteemed I kept my underpants on Dershowitz. Eh, well, maybe last decade. Maybe 15 years ago. But now, Mr. Dershowitz, Virginia Roberts and Maria Farmer and Michelle Akata and Annie and the rest of the survivors, well, they're not standing alone anymore. They're not going to be so easily 
lead this time, sir. And frankly, I find it disgusting that you would even attempt this strategy once again. Well, you're a bully and a scoundrel. Maxwell attorney Laura Menninger responded to Cooper's assertions by saying it was patently false and ridiculous for Dershowitz to argue no one has relied on the original protective order or that the reliance issued have substantially changed due to the ongoing unsealing process mandated by the appeals court. Maxwell herself relied on the order, Menninger said, when she agreed to provide evidence to Roberts in the underlying case. And again, this must be absolutely pour gasoline on your campfire explosive type stuff for for everyone to be clamoring over the documents this way for maxwell's attorneys to be fighting tooth and nail to make sure that uh, they don't get released and then for old uh, i kept my underpants on to dive in face first like this with howie cooper boy these must be explosive documents and i for one cannot wait for them to see the light of day. Menninger went on to complain that Dershowitz has, in fact, gained access to some documents covered by the scope of the original protective order and noted that Maxwell was upset because Roberts' new attorneys have access to those original documents covered by the protective order. They're her lawyers. They should have access to all legal documents. Why would you try and keep these documents from the people who are defending Virginia in the case? A little manipulation of the justice system, perhaps. Perhaps stacking the deck. You know, we're on to you folks over there, okay? You judges and you lawyers and all of you other creeps who are standing in the way of justice. It appears that Robert's attorneys have produced some discovery to Dershowitz in the second defamation case and, per Menninger, this goes against prior rulings. Oh, please, give me an absolute break. Again, technicalities, right? That's all we hear from Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers. Technicality, technicality, technicality. Same from Prince Andrew and same now for Dershowitz. You know how you know people are guilty, folks? Because they're not standing on the top of mountains yelling about their innocence. Instead, they're pointing out technicalities, hoping beyond hope that their scoundrel friends within the justice system will find a way to loophole them out of it. Robert's attorney, Sigrid McCauley, says she was retained for both cases and shrugged off the question of access by noting that she is working on both cases, meaning she already has access to all of this discovery, meaning she already has the files. She added that the protective order has, has barred them from producing some documents to Dershowitz. However, Presco ordered some discovery, so they went by that. And there were people wondering how Dershowitz had access to some documents earlier. There's your answer. These documents were produced in discovery phase by uh, Sigrid McCauley and given to Dershowitz as per Presco's order. So that answers that question. Given a second chance to make his case, Cooper said the situation was unfair and inequitable, alleging that the protective order has produced a completely unfair tactical advantage in litigation for one side only. Oh, how does it feel? How does it feel to be up against the wall? How does it feel to not have any wiggle room off of the hook? How does it feel finally to get reeled in by the fishermen? The, it's not a good feeling, is it? I believe there is a compelling need here, he said, citing Dershowitz's constitutional right to defend himself while facing an adversary who has in her custody, possession or control, all of the materials he seeks. What, he wants the evidence, right? Because he knows. Dirty Dershy knows what's up. Dirty Dersho definitely knows that these documents are going to absolutely eviscerate him blow his stupid-ass alibi right out of the water and cause a tsunami to come his way. Cooper also raised eyebrows by claiming that the original protective order was in, improvidently granted. Judge Pre Preska quickly shot that line of argument down. So it looks like Preska is not really too happy with Howie Cooper here, and by proxy, she probably has had her belly full of Dershowitz and his antics as well. 
Has Dershowitz finally run into a judge that's not going to be finessed by him? I would really love to see Judge Loretta Preska emerge as a hero in this case. Boy, would that be fantastic, huh? Because one thing this, short, this story is short of, we are short on some goddamn heroes. Issues about the order of document classification and particularized analysis in hindsight do not mean the protective order was improvidently granted at the outset, the judge said, because some documents were not public at the time the order was enacted. She ended that discussion by noting that no protective order can possibly foresee every single document potentially covered. And that is well within her purview, right? As the judge and the person hearing the case, she has great power in that courtroom, folks. She might as well be God in that courtroom almost. What she says goes. Preska then quizzed an attorney representing a John Doe as to why Dershowitz's request was out of the question. Doe, a non-party, filed a letter motion arguing against Dershowitz's request with the SDNY on Monday. Now, folks, I don't have any evidence to back what up, up what I'm about to say. This is just my gut feeling, right? I think this John Doe in this case might be Glenn Dubin. I've been going back and forth between Glenn Dubin and Les Wexner, and I'm, I'm leaning towards Glenn Dubin, but it would not take much for me to be convinced that it's Les Wexner as well. One of those two is where I'm aiming right now, folks. Doe's attorney, Nick Lewin, appeared largely flabbergasted by Dershowitz's basic legal position. Lewin said the request was neither efficient nor proportional. There's no such thing, Lewin said, noting that the protective order was about a completely different and distinct case. That's not how protective orders work. Menninger also chimed in to say that Maxwell doesn't want Robert's current attorneys to have access to all the documents. They should give them back, she advised, and that would cure the alleged inequity cited by Cooper before dismissing the idea of letting Dershowitz access the documents. The fox would be guarding the henhouse, Menninger said. Oh, these people are just there. They have no shame. Menninger is just grasping at straws here. This is not a tangible, uh, a tangible uh, defense, and their, their basic position is untenable. Preska is not going to fall for this, I don't think, folks. Judge Preska offered Cooper another opportunity to make his case by asking if there was a more targeted way or a narrowly tailored way to produce certain documents to Dershowitz. Cooper responded by ignoring the question and essentially making the case for his client's innocence against Robert's claim. Annoyed, the judge interrupted him again and replied, Thank you for that, counselor, but let's get on to what we're here to talk about. So, the judge is just, Preska is not happy with Cooper at all here, and she admonished him several times, yelled at him, and I don't think this is going to end up well for Dershowitz, folks. I finally think that Dirty Dersh has run into his match, and I think that his reign of terror within the courtroom of getting his way is going to quickly come to an end here. Cooper, a bit chastised, then went off on a tangent about a deposition I'm not allowed to talk about concerning several lurid allegations against Dershowitz, including rape, sex trafficking, and conspiracy. Miami Herald journalist Julie K. Brown says this deposition also implicates Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Victoria's Secret Les Wexner. This is from the, the, the discovery phase here where Dershowitz um, got the, the, the documents from J Virginia Roberts' lawyers as per Preska's order is what it looks like here. Finally, Cooper answered the question directly. That suggested tailoring, Your Honor, is so narrow it would preclude Dershowitz from establishing the extent of the defamation of which he is being accused. Cooper said then, said when pressed by the judge to stay on topic. He went on to suggest a quasi-exhaustive release of documents requiring court notice for anyone who has documents that might mention or concern Dershowitz. It's all about Dirty D. Dirty D is such a hero in his own mind. He's one of those people that, in his story, he is for sure the protagonist. I mean, this guy is Jon Snow in his story. Meanwhile, the rest of us watching it relate with him more as Ramsey Bolton. The response didn't work out well for Cooper either. But how is he going to know, Preska yelled into her phone. 
Preska let th- let these guys have it. And again, I, I don't mean to reiterate again here, but it's, I think it's important and it has to be a, a, a point that's driven home. Preska doesn't look like she's playing games, folks. The judge then suggested all the proposed non-parties and third parties wouldn't just give up their discovery documents and that Dershowitz wouldn't have any workable way of sifting through the entire tranche of documents just to find those relevant to his case. And he shouldn't have access to that. He is being credibly accused of a horrific crime here, folks. Let's keep that in context. Why should he be given access to these documents? You get ungats. The hearing ended after Lewin agreed with Preska that Cooper's proposal was unworkable. The judge ultimately reserved her judgment for later. And later is in two weeks I'm hearing that there is another um, conference call scheduled, uh, hearing scheduled, and she's going to make a ruling at that time. So I obviously that, that can change, I guess. The docket can always change, but as of now, that is what we're hearing. So we'll stay on top of it. We'll continue to cover this and we'll continue to add meat to the bone and context to this story because this is so important here, folks. It's so important to get down in the weeds here and try and make heads of tails of what's going on and to try and make sure that we're keeping on track with what we're doing as far as covering this case because there are a lot of rabbit holes to traverse. There are a lot of threads to pull on. But one thing at a time, one case at a time, I mean, one part of the case at a time. And honestly, I think as of right now, there is, this is the most important thing going on in this case, folks, because if these documents, if and when they come out, it is going to blow the lid off of this whole entire cover-up. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at ProtonMail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All right, folks, you can find all of the good stuff inside of the description box. Until later on, I'll see you then.